are these people? Putin's a madman. Um, Oh God! Yeah. So, um, hopefully, it, but maybe there's a silver lining in this. We probably won't have to talk about Bowman ever again, or at least in not in a significant way. Probably um, after this, unless he fucks up your order at McDonald's, you know, like uh, no, whatever. No, no. Um, I think he's not. No. He'll he'll get some type of um contributor job maybe for cnn or he might get some lobby job like i'm sure there's going to be a lot of places who are going to take pity on him right um I, but I, he will i'm not worried about him in this idea so i think he will be just fine but mm. yes as we reported earlier and as many of you all know because it's all over twitter it's all over mainstream media jamal bowman is out uh, so he lost his primary to his uh, Democratic uh, opponent, uh, George Latimer, in New York. Um, so let's get into it. So this is a political article, very not often that we use mainstream media articles, but this yep. is the one I found uh, as this was going on last night, uh, at least what I pulled last night. So Nick Reichman... Rich Mendez and Emily Nago write, um, Jamal Bowman is ousted in most expensive house primary ever. Westchester County Executive George Latimer bested the incumbent Democrat. So they write, Rep Representative Jamal Bowman was trounced in a suburban New York race that became a referendum on progressives' attitudes towards Israel and the most expensive primary house primary in U.S. history. Moderate Democrat George Latimer bested Bowman Tuesday, making Bowman the first member of the squad to lose an election since the far-left group formed in 2018. Latimer, a challenger who ran like an incumbent, benefited from an unprecedented flood of outside cash in a primary fueled by allegations of racism and the party's sharp divide over the Israel-Hamas war. Hamas. A leading, a leading pro-Israel group spent more than um, 14 million on TV ads to see him. And as the results rolled in, it became clear that APAC and its super PAC, United Democracy Project, had succeeded in making an example of a two term member of Congress for routinely criticizing the Israeli offensive in Gaza. Still, many of the TV ads attacking Bowman or praising Latimer made scant mention of Israel and its scant focus on infrastructure spending and other issues of local concern. The House District, which includes affluent suburban communities and diverse urban neighborhoods, is not expected to be in play for Republicans in November, making Bowman's defeat a triumph for centrist Democrats. Since the recent rise of progressives, Latimer and his fellow moderates have sought to drag the party back to the middle, especially when it comes to Israel policy. APAC and its super PAC has spent heavily across the country in a bid to unseat other critics of Israel, but no way did they anticipate such an advantage as Bowman's district with a large Jewish population. The APAC-aligned United Democracy Project in the statement vowed to re replicate its backing of Latimer against Israel critics across the country. Latimer's victory is another example of how support for the U.S.-Israel alliance is good policy and good politics, the group said. UPD will continue to support leaders who promote our partnership with Israel and oppose detractors regardless of political party. So basically, that's just a straight-out threat right there. Mm -hmm. um, and I was actually thinking about this today because what people are not necessarily talking about because everybody, not everybody, but a lot of people are in the fields about Bowman losing and basic, people are basically like, oh, it's APAC that took him out and this and that and the other. Well, Bowman was losing mm. by 14 points before APAC ever became Shoved involved. A ton of money in. Right. So I made the comment on Twitter earlier today, you know, like, did APAC have to give as much money as they did to ensure of this loss? I would I mean, argue probably just head on a spike money. Like, here's what we can do, you know? Right. So, um, I, so going off of that, I feel like it wasn't so much they used that money 
to oust Bowman since he was in trouble anyhow. And we'll get to more why I believe he was in trouble to begin with later. I feel that was more of a warning shot for everyone else in Congress, basically being like, if you oppose us or if you oppose Israel, we have this amount of money to own you. So, and I feel in particular of the squad, this was mostly for them. Yeah. So, you know, Corey is up, Corey Bush is up for her seat uh, in August, I believe. So she's next on the chopping block, basically. Um, so, but yeah, like I said, I feel like it wasn't so much that they needed to give in this much money. I think they just wanted to just to kind of say, what's up? This is what we're able to do, and we can do more if you cross us. Um, so, so who is that? Uh, Facer Maternal Rage. She yeah. said, they said, uh, 800,000 against Corey already. Yeah. So, you know, and actually, I also said this online too. It's like, if you're able to spend all this money, to get politicians to do your bidding. Why can't you use that towards needs for people here? Like, I don't know, like universal health care or a living wage or paid family leave. Hell, maybe even reparations for Black people since a lot of these scientists claim that we support Black people and like what their rights, but, and we, and I, we had the discussion with Indy a few weeks back you know, like a lot of Zionists slash Jews or liberal Jews claim, oh, we support rights for black people, but are not necessarily in the fight towards black issues in that way. So it's just kind of like this money has been so wasteful in terms of bending politicians in the will of doing stuff for Israel versus actually using that money, if you're going to do it, actually use it towards better thinning the populace here. I don't know. I, I, am, I, am I crazy in thinking that that's what this money should be used? Or Well, I mean, it's, it, the issue is, is that would never happen from that entity, you know? No. Like, this is, this is a lobbying group and a pack solely designed to, you know corrupt politicians so and they don't have to be listed as foreign agents right right you know the last guy who wanted that to happen got a bullet through his dome so you know um yeah leon in the chat why would zionists spend money on americans yeah i mean i'm with you right i, f I feel your thing too it's like would be nice if that's what happened but right you know um yeah. Um, anyway, let's keep going. Um, Bowman, who was endorsed by the Democratic Socialists of America, yeah. was first elected in the progressive wave in 2020, defeating longtime Democratic Rep uh, Representative Elliot Engel. Notice how they also didn't say here, not, it's not just Democratic Socialists, and it wasn't just Justice Democrats. Jamal mm -hmm. Bowman was also endorsed by J Street, yep. which... Which is, if you think of a pack as like the far right extremist pack, J Street is more of the liberal centrist pack in Still terms Zionist. of the Israel lobby. Yeah. So, and actually, j just doing some research on this, I found out that they were endorsing Bowman up until the beginning of this year. Mm. So, you know, like, I think they try to both sides him not being happy with him in terms of the turn that he made uh, towards Israel. Uh, again, we'll get into that later. Yeah. Uh, but they were still basically endorsing the man up until, I believe, January of this year, I believe it was, that they yeah. withdrew his endorsement from him. But yeah, like, Bowman was getting money and being endorsed by another pro-Israel lobby. So, and again, I want to say that because no one is saying that. Like, yeah, APAC, I would argue, was an issue, question mark. 
but J Street was the group that was has basically corrupted Bowman directly. And it's sad that that is not be being reported on. Um, anyway, this time his critics encouraged registered Republicans and people not enrolled in the party to become Democrats in order to participate in the closed party primary. And a coalition that backs the interests of Yeshiva spent more than one million throughout the race to register 2,000 Republicans and independents as Democrats. Bowman has called for a ceasefire and criticized President Joe Biden for providing the weapons to Israel in the wake of October 7th terrorist attacks by Hamas. Excuse me. He also questioned whether sexual violence occurred during those attacks and later apologized. And Latterman himself charted a cautious approach towards Israel. Uh, he traveled, did Latimer, to the country at the end of 2023, shortly before declaring his bid for the House seat. He has also condemned Hamas for the civilian deaths in Gaza as Israel bombarded the enclave and pressed for a return of hostages kidnapped during the October attack. But Latimer has been careful not to criticize Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu for much of the campaign and declined to weigh in on Senator Majority Leader Chuck Schumer's call for a new Israeli government. Mm -hmm. uh, DMFI PAC, which spends Four hundred twenty-five thousand on TV ads boosting Latimer's bid called this victory the outcome of smart politics on both Israel as well as core Democratic Party concerns. Mm -hmm. These results also validate President Biden's vision for a mainstream and inclusive Democratic Party, as well as the Biden Latimer approach, bringing people together to achieve important results like the infrastructure law that is rebuilding our crumbling roads, bridges, and water systems. DMFI PAC chair Mark Wellman said. Yeah, Allies of Latimer exists. Yeah, well, lastly, we checked uh, there's a bridge in Baltimore that collapsed. Uh -huh. <laughs> that is currently yeah. in the process of being rebuilt. A couple but, of trains okay. blown up. You know, <laughs> don't worry about it. Uh, so. Allies of Latimer insisted Israel was only one factor in their argument against Bowman a former middle school principal. Bowman's antagonist charged he was not present in the district during his two terms and that his pulling of a fire alarm during a House vote was an embarrassment. His vote against a key infrastructure spending package became fodder for during the campaign as well. Larimer, the Westchester County executive, has spent decades in local and state elected office making him a familiar face for Democratic voters an unusually formidable primary challenger for an incumbent lawmaker. He received endorsements from an array of party officials, elected leaders, and local labor movements. I want to pause right here. I, I think you, if you read that in passing, you wouldn't think much of that. But this is the stuff that I've been saying, and this is the stuff that I've been telling you and Indy kind of like privately. Mm -hmm. This is the thing that you need to do in order to run for office. What do I mean by that? Like, we see a lot of people who just go into office with no, I wouldn't say any experience. I wouldn't say you necessarily need experience, but you're not affiliated necessarily with an organization or some type of local or state um, position like councilman, or whatever, uh, state senate, whatever, and be able to build your name in terms of the stuff that you do within your city, your town, or your state. Like, the fact is, in, whether you like it or not, Latimer has had a name for himself in these roles, for God, and I didn't, didn't check, but at least long enough that he was able to make a name for himself. So the fact that now this came the time where uh, people were looking to boot out Bowman, they were looking to him based on the things that he was able to accomplish. Um, not sure if they were good things, but at least he got his name out there. And he, he got that name out there over the context of years. So this is the kind of stuff that I think we need to be looking more for in terms of organizing. Like the idea that you have to build that rapport over time. Like you can't just come in and kind of say, oh, I don't like this person. So I'm just going to vote against them when people have no idea who you are, have no idea what you stand for and can't see a body of work to 
you know, justify you wanting to be in higher office. So I think that's very significant in terms of that was among other reasons that he was easily corruptible. But yeah. you can be you can make the case that at least he was a person that people do within the district for God knows how long that he was essentially selected in the position to uh you know Al Spoman uh, out of his Congress seat. Does that make sense? Like yeah. I mean, I just feel like this is the kind of stuff that we need to be talking about. I think definitely after my only, my only issue is with over. that a lot of times, especially when it comes to like labor unions and stuff like that, is like the minute you start engaging with people who even want to run as politicians, you are politicizing your union or other right. organization. And if that's what something you don't want to happen, so that you can work across aisles and across political labels and so on and so forth it's a difficult line to like you know uh walk so you know right. that's my I, only i think qualm there yeah i think you made the point in terms of if you're going to work for an organization or to build your profile i think it's important that you do not make it a political stance. It's the idea of like yeah, you're there to the work the, at that or like to further that right. cause, and that should be your own right. goal, right? So, but it just goes to show if you're in the right position for a long enough time, and you're able to build a body of work that will make you credible, at least to the people, not for corporations, then that should be the thing that should elevate you for people to recognize you as a leader in terms of, you know, federal Congress or Senate or whatever. So, yeah, I just thought that was very significant because I think people are not necessarily talking about that. I know we have, but mm. it's it, I think this is one of the rare cases that it's not like somebody that APAC or anybody just asked out of the blue. It was a person that has been in the community, is well known in the community, has worked within the community that was called to Al Bowman. Yeah. Um, so, anyway, um, let's continue. Uh, Bowman came into the race with some big advantages. The district lines were redrawn slightly in his favor, and the House Democratic Minority Leader, Hakeem Defries of New York, endorsed him, but offered li very little visible support after. That was left in the final days of the race to prominent left-leaning Democrats like AOC and Bernie Sanders who rallied with Bowman on Saturday. Bowman insisted his campaign was built around lower-income people of color in the district who had been ignored by elected officials. He drew support from a constellation of left-leaning organizations that play key roles in progressive politics, including the Working Families Party and Make the Road Action. The WFP on Tuesday said it spent $506,000 on advertising, a fraction of the money that poured into aid Latimer's campaign. Combined, Bowman's allied organization spent $1.75 million. Jesus Christ, like all that money just going towards advertising and marketing that can actually be used to help people. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Anyway. And in the home stretch, Bowman said APAC and his backing of Latimer was fueled by racist MAGA Republicans. Um, didn't Hillary Clinton endorse Latimer? I'm betting. She did. <laughs> okay. She did. So, you know, and that's another talking point. It's like all these Rep MAGA Republicans are going against... Uh, Bowman, no, it's your own party. <laughs> like, Jeffries basically threw you out in the wolves. Hillary Clinton endorsed your opponent. And so you got no support from the party that you were trying to be all in kiki with, like, right. all of this time. It, how many How many members of the Democratic Party are, are in bed with APAC? Like, it's both, it's not... I think this is the thing is that he still has to fucking upkeep a, like, duopolis mindset. So it can't be the Democrats. Gotta be Republicans. You know, 
they would never harm little old little old Jamal Bowman. They would never do something like that. You know, he pulled the fire alarm for them. Remember, that's what he did. Right. Like <laughs> they would never. Um. Yeah. I just okay. <laughs> you know, like my. Uh, ugh. Um. Anyway. I'm an outspoken black man, Bowman said during the final TV debate on PIX 11. If we can get that on the soundboard, we should pull that too. I'm an outspoken black man. Um, His supporters don't want that because it challenges their power. Bowman backers acknowledge that Larimer's retail politicking skills and the massive spending on his behalf created an imposing challenge. But they also insisted the success against one squad member will be hard to duplicate in other parts of the country. They found an old-time elected official who is willing to be bought, Working Families Party co-chair Anna Maria Archelia said. But they will not be able to replicate that everywhere. Well, we'll see about that in terms of Cori Bush. So, granted, they haven't spent, from what I, we just saw, like as much money yet. But it's June, so that's not to say that they're not going to ramp up their spending against Corey. And I know her challenger is also a Zionist, naturally, as well. Yeah. Um, like, I'm sure they're going to be tempting him with some money, too, if they haven't already, um, to make the case against her. Um, but yeah, so I think I'm done with this. Uh, let's read what do this and it said. I'm going to pull up some tweets. Um, it wasn't the 14.5 million in ads that sank Bowman. Bowman lost because one, rich Zionist scum Democrats in Westchester County love Israel, hate Arabs, and are totally unbothered by the mass murder of innocent children because they're worthless species of human shit. Two, Bowman is a feckless idiot coward who didn't have the brains or the balls to serve in a way that would have kept his face behind him. And so when APAC came for him, he was a sitting duck. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. This is stealing from Keaton. What? Doing his division. Oh, funny stuff. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, friend of the show. Uh, Brett Wilkins uh, also tweeted, now that he's lost, I'll say it, and the same goes for any Democrat who endorses Biden. Jamal Bowman is complicit in Israel's Gaza genocide, and all that this implies. Sorry, but the truth hurts. Yes, it um, does. So let me just check. So, so yeah, so pull this from post Duopolis. So let's take a trip down memory lane. Uh, and see the fuckery that uh, Bowman committed during his last two terms um, in office. Because the, the idea now is like, oh, like, oh, poor, poor Bowman, like, APAT defeated him. Oh, oh, we have to protect him. Oh, oh, like, we need him there because he's a progressive or whatever. I said this to you, people have very short memories. Like, two years ago, like, especially since we started INN and we started INN News, we've been having it, at, me personally, have been having it out for Biden at Bowman, like, since we started this show. Mm -hmm. um, and especially for me personally, because he spoke at my event uh, at the organization I'm a part of, I think now three years ago? Yeah. Or maybe two, I forget. Uh, which I had it out then that we talked about here. Um, but P Postoopolis made a great tweet that talks about some of the things that he did that shouldn't justify the fact of him basically staying in Congress. So you can play it. <laughs> New squad member Cory Bush, Jamal Bowman reviews to back Nancy Pelosi for speaker. Except now it's at the beginning. <laughs> Whether he would vote for Pelosi, <laughs> voted for Pelosi. 
Uh, well, I'll well, split some capital got police you. funding, okay. letting we bill you. pass by one vote. And more to come, clown, thug, crook. Oh, oh, that that one. For Ukraine. <laughs> Didn't yep. know where the Don Pass for Crimea. Uh, Bowman because said voting for extra Don <laughs> funding. Who's a madman? I'm from Palestine. Uh, so, yep. yeah. So. And I'm going to go off on this later, but there's a lot of people who are Arab, allegedly, are now saying, oh, you know, like, yeah, Bowman made a mistake, a mistake in terms of voting, but he changed his ways. And like, in him going to Israel and seeing what was happening, and then he completely changed course. And I've been saying to people, like, I do not need to go to Israel to understand what's happening there in order to understand that I should be that I should vote no on the Iron Dome. Mm -hmm. Like, I shouldn't need to go all the way to Israel in order to have that Jesus moment. And being that he was a Justice Democrat slash uh, part of DSA, that was in their bylaws that they needed to be uh, BDS. So the fact that you basically went... So... It just shows me two things. It either was uh, DSA and Justice Democrats did not have any kind of coalition with these people in terms of what, what their job was, what their mission was, and how they can be aligned in that way as far as an organization. Or Bowman just didn't give a damn and was willing to take J Street money because and he and I think he basically said he didn't want to seem like um, he was going against Israel, but in doing that and voting for the Iron Dome, you essentially kill children. Mm -hmm. Like you know, those children are not coming back, even though you saw the error of your ways. You can't bring them back. So. Iron Dome is known as defense, but we're seeing the defense that Israel oh, is doing right I'm now. Sorry. I'm sorry, Colin. A thing that can shoot rockets that hit other incoming missile rockets can't be used offensively? You don't think that that's possible? Right. Like... But that's what, that was some of the excuses I saw people online making was like, oh, like... Right. I if that was wasn't there and Iran's missiles were hitting Israel right now because of the genocide, do you think Israel would continue doing that said genocide? No. No. So, who's the one who kept that running? Right. You know, I mean, that's also not the only defense bill he voted for. So, you know, like how many times he allowed, he voted for a spending bill that sent money to Ukraine, Israel, you know, like been a couple of those. So... Okay, but I don't know if you remember, Colin, but way back, way back when you Not went to an event. Not when. This was last year. The, this Months? time last year. That's a ways so back. Remember, yeah, so remember when I paid that $75, right, that $75 to go to this squad event in oh D.C. Oh my God, I forgot you paid fucking $75. Yes, I paid $75. I, I got some content. And I think people actually donated enough to make that back for you, so... Yes, they did. You know. So thank you to the people in the chat who were, the, who were around last year to help me recoup that. This is the kind of stuff um, your donations get you, is responses <laughs> like this. to fucking idiots. Right. right. Um, so I want to play this again, because... Because I saw a lot of people basically being like, oh, well, again, like Bowman, oh, you, he saw the error of his ways and he changed and he was advocating for us and all this kind of stuff. This was the time the bullshit that he was saying last year. Now, to give some context, he was talking about black crime here. Yeah. But a lot. So this was prior to October 7th. But look at what he was saying back then. Again, this was last May. So go uh -huh. ahead. You can play this. The, the majority of Congress does not have a sense of urgency 
as it relates to doing something about this issue. Everybody's just going about their business, going about their day. And in nice suits, going to fundraisers, raising money, getting reelected, and they're not doing shit. Like, why are we negotiating with them on anything if they don't want to do anything about their Why are we negotiating on any issue? Any issue. If we have people in Congress that are okay with our children being killed. Yeah. And gun violence being the number one killer of children in America. But you don't have a problem Isra with Palestinians. Israeli guns. Being Israeli killed. guns are fine, Colin. Israeli guns are perfectly fine. Right. You know. We have lost our soul as a nation. And so when I, I process all of this consciously and subconsciously. Why? When you weren't able to sleep at night? Consciously. Before I came out and started yelling at reporters to ask Republicans what the hell are they going to do about gun violence, which is what. What about the Democrats? Massive... What are they going to do about gun violence? What are they going to do? What are they going to do? Are they going to spend more and send more guns to Ukraine? Are we going to fight they more wars more in the police Syria, here. Lebanon, like who's in South America? What? Addressing me and then us having having that back and forth. But for me, you know, as I hear everyone speak on, on the issues that we're fighting for, I'm really grateful and appreciative to, to, to them and all of us and all of you. But I'm also like, damn, yo, like we we gotta take over this whole shit. Like, yes. like and I mean right now, like right now, like right now, like 2024 is a wrap. Yeah. Yeah. It's not just taking back the house. We got to grow seats in the right. Senate. Yeah. We, we've got to drag this 80 old man across the finish line of the win. Um, excuse you? Huh? Right. What was that? Like. We've got to grow seats in the Senate. We, we've got to drag this 80 old man across the finish line of the win. Why? And, Why? And, Why? Sorry, man, but Why? I'm upset, yo. Because Why? there's Why? another thing, right? Why? I know, right? Why? I know. I know. You it know really the, you know the thing. Yeah. Uh, right. Why? Right. Why? <laughs> why? That was me saying why, by the way. Bro, and it's cool. not like you were screaming either. It was no. like, there's only like fucking 10 people in that room, dog. You're like, Brad could be like, why? 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 <laughs> why Biden? That was the biggest part. Like, you had to say that. If it was just why, right. he could have just kept talking. But because you said Biden... He's like, oh, shit. Well, I guess I got to address that. So uh, bad cookies. No, I didn't get kicked out. Um, no, no, I didn't get kicked out. You have to ask I some more warning. questions later. I, I, I got a warning that if I kept that up, that I was going to get kicked out. But I just got so heated as they did more of this stuff yeah. that I left on my own. So, no, I didn't get kicked out. I walked out eventually, like sometime after this. So, that's not all I got. No. Um, so shout out to Gashing Girl. Uh, you might, you guys might know her on Twitter. She also had a, probably a better confrontation with Bowman in her district, by the way. Uh, and she confronted him. So again, she was talking about Israel before, so June 25th. Uh, so I believe she was talking to Bowman about this before October 7th. Mm -hmm. I'm not entirely sure. But either way, um, I know Sabi had this clip, so I pulled it. But she asked Bowman, you know, she confronted Bowman regarding Israel. So um, so you can play, I, I think I timed it, so you could play this clip. Um, I'm 
Uh, right now, it's not live. Listen to what I'm saying. You just want to say what you want to say. Listen to what I'm saying, Louise. Oh, you ask me a question, I answer it. Now I'm giving you some feedback, some mm. advice. If you want it or not, you don't have to take it. Okay? <laughs> I'm in Congress every day. Okay? I see the power of the other side. We don't have that power. <laughs> Pause. Hold on. Pause. You did. You did for a brief time when you first got into Congress. You did, and you didn't use it. So I hate we. I hate being this over a dead horse. That was forced to vote. You had the numbers mm -hmm. where you were able to make concessions on anything you wanted. It didn't have to be Medicare for all. And people are always like, oh, you wouldn't have gotten it. It wasn't about getting it. It was about the idea to bring up that media spectacle in order for it to be a big issue, especially during a fucking pandemic yeah. when people would have been more concerned about like Medicare for all in particular. Um, you could have brought that up. If not that, anything. And you chose not to. So because you have the power, a mad you man. chose not to use it. Go ahead. <laughs> we gotta organize the people here to speak out on the issue and push elected officials here to speak out on that issue. Which is what you do, clearly. What do you need to make a stand? What, 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 what do you vote to come on there? Come on. Because I'm trying to be strategic and play the long game. Stop. You know, it, listen, Stop. It, <laughs> I'm trying to. Why did you vote for the Vine Dome? I'm trying to be strategic and play the long game for whose benefit? Because yours, Putin's a definitely mad not Palestinians. As I said, they're dead. You're trying to play the long game for yourself. You align with Democrats on that issue because you wanted to protect yourself. The very people that you're trying to help essentially kicked you out. So how did that help you, Bowman? Mm -hmm. Like you were doing all this mess, like voting for Pelosi twice, voting for Jeffries, when they had it in for you from the jump. And you refused to go in there in what you were supposed to do to be adversarial against your party. Fuck the Republicans. We know their shit. But Democrats are just as shit, if not worse shit, and you were supposed to combat against them. And the fact that you didn't do that, and even in here, and some people in the chat, how condescending he is, in terms of, I'm doing what I can, what are you doing, that kind of bullshit. That's not her job. Your job is to do something. And honestly, if you were fighting for most to vote, even if you showed some type of grit there, that might have been enough for people to see that you're working towards something. And people might have given you some credit for that. But you and the squad did not do that. When we needed you to. And so as a result of that, what are you going to be known for, Bowman? All you're going to be known now is the idiot that pulled down the fire alarm. That's your legacy now. Mm -hmm. Not being a fighter, not even trying to push for these things when you had them when you had the numbers and you had the Democratic Party by the balls in order to do something. You chose not to do it. And basically you've been lame ducks for the past couple of years. Go ahead and finish. The people that are being massacred by listen, Israel listen, listen. I, cannot wait. What, do, you, do you even know what I've done since I've been in Congress on this issue? No. Do you know anything I've done since I've been in Congress? What have I done? What have I done since I've been in Congress on this issue? What does that have to do with what you did now? What have I done since I've been in Congress on this issue? Specific? Specific? Tell, tell me, I'm here. Y'all don't know. Why? So you look for what I didn't do, but you don't look for what I've done. So we're not, so we're not, so we're not. 
What's the minimum standard? The minimum standard, I'm, I'm standard right. is voting no on the minimum standard. Reading McCollum's bill that she introduced in 2020. Does it matter? Were you incapable of voting? Notice how he won't answer. Okay. You, 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 no. Why were you willing to vote? No, he's not. He can't say. That is he he can't say. Look what I've done. But can't no, name what he did. It's all obfuscation. It's what have I done? What have I did? And you Why can't are you name asking two this? things. You what can't name two things that you done? did directly. No, this is a thing he's acting like he didn't do. For a uh, pause. This motherfucker is trying to equate. He voted for the Iron Dome, okay? She's asking right. him, "Why did you vote for the Iron Dome?" His reply: "Why are you focusing on the stuff I've done?" Like he's trying. That's what. What, uh, what about the other stuff that's been done? Right? Like, why are you focused? He literally said a second ago, "Like, why are you?" Well, you, you don't know what I've done. Why are you focusing on what I haven't done? No, she's focusing on what you've done. You've done. Oh. And he said that's that one vote. That one vote. People are that being one massacred. That one vote could have made a difference in terms of having children, and we're going to go into that later, mm -hmm. being killed. On the other stuff that's been done and what I've said, Does that affect you don't even know. Okay. You can't even point to my record. I know oh, she has. You, you have voted no for the record. Iron Dome. You voted you for the Iron no Dome. Record. She's pointing to the fucking record. She's pointing directly to something you've done, and you're like, well, I uh, ooh, ooh. Record that I'm talking about. Yeah, but you just point on one thing. I can give you five yes. other things I've yes. done. That's a crucial thing. I can give you five other things I've actually done. Are you going to stand against oh, removing all Israel aid? Yeah, just go. I assume that's enough. Yes, I did. Yeah, uh, but that's the kind of bullshit that you're not going to see on mainstream media. No. This is the kind of bullshit that, like, and this is the kind of thing that I saw in Bowman in the interactions that I saw with him. Very condescending, very, like, obfuscate in terms of what he did. And he can't even stand in the shit that he was, should have been accountable to. So I don't understand why people now all of a sudden, and granted, they're not going to show this on mainstream media. But I'm getting so sick and tired of people like, we have to defend this man. We have to protect this man. He's working for us. No. What has he, why should he, he should be protecting us. And let me call out something right now, Bowman. The reason why you fucking lost is that you abandoned the very people that you said you're going to work for. That the people in for you. your district, the people in your district who are just going to be like democratic loyalists. You don't need to fight for them. You would have had their vote anyway. It's the non-voters, that not the people of color, who are so disenchanted with voting and seeing how the system has not worked for them. You, for some reason, were actually able to galvanize them, especially in light of George Floyd. And look, here's the reality, too. If George Floyd didn't happen, I would not, I'm not sure. It could have been 50-50 whether he would have gone in there in the first place. But because he and Cory Bush capitalized on that during that summer four years ago, and because their incumbents were shit on the issue, that was probably the thing that took them over the edge as far as winning. And they weren't able to maintain that given how little they were able to fight for the very people that they said that they were going to work for. So, sorry but not sorry, but people should not be giving this guy any mind. He Cowtail to the Democratic Party, I think from what I saw, 90% of the time. And at the end of the day, he was going to tell you to vote for Biden anyway in the midst of a fucking genocide. But he went to Israel and he sympathized with the Palestinians there. Fuck, fuck that. Yep. Shout out to Nuno. He sent me this two hours ago because I was yelling at some Arab, allegedly, who was like, oh, I, you know, I, you know, he changed his ways after he went to Israel, and you don't talk to Arabs, and you don't understand what Arabs go through. 
Well, Nuno's an Arab. Nuno's an Arab, and I talk to him all the time, and he definitely does not agree with the fact, like, he's happy that Bowman's gone. But if you want to hear from another Arab, check out this one. Um, I forgot his name right now, uh, but I think he does a podcast I forgot. I'll have to check on it just now. But so he's speaking at the very top screen. Okay. Uh, Ali, Ali Abuman, Ab- Abumna. Yeah, so Abunina. the elect, I think it's Ali the electronic. Abunina. Got him, dumb. Yeah, the electronic yep. Infatada, I think is what it is. Inf- I think Intifada. that's his podcast. Yeah. Intifada, yeah. So, um, so this is what he was saying. Uh, so go ahead, you can play it. In the case of Palestine, while Bowman presented himself as anti-APEC, he was very pro-Israel. He defended Israel's right to defend itself, supported Iron Dome funded equate, funding, equated anti-Zionism with anti-Semitism, and accused pro-Palestine protesters of being anti-Semitic. So again, you can see how uh, people are reacting to this. And I think the lessons do need to be taken, but I, I doubt that they uh, will. People will keep trying to tell us, oh, this is a lesser evil. And right. some people have been saying in, in discussions I've been having online, they've been saying, oh, well, it's not that Bowman was great. It's that we should be opposed to APAC for taking out, you know, w- we should be worried that APAC has this power to unseat, um, you know, any member of Congress they don't like. Yeah, that is uh, terrible. But don't ask me when we're struggling to um, uh, do all the things we need to do to prioritize saving Bowman to make a point about APAC over stopping genocide. The only goal should be stopping the genocide, not not saving, you know, fake progressives who are really not doing anything for us. So, I, you know, I know people's views on that differ, but we were told by even some people in our community, oh, Joe Biden is the lesser evil. Joe Biden brought us a Holocaust, a Holocaust, yeah. the Holocaust of our time. Yeah. That's what le- lesser evilism brings. So, you know, people say, well, what, what, what should we do? I mean, I don't give advice on voting. It's not, it's not what I want to do or where i want to go but what i want to say Come is on, that man. maybe the answer Give isn't there maybe here. we can't vote our way out of genocide especially not by voting for the party that brought us genocide so maybe different strategies are, are what we need to be talking about yeah i mean a lot of what you're saying that yeah we need a different strategy we cannot vote our way out the... of he said genocide but fill in the blank Anything. and i seriously hope after this election, after the fuckery that's going to happen in this election within the next few months, oh, that we're in independent media will be able to have those serious conversations. What would it look like to engage people without them necessarily going into electoralism? And look, and I'm going to say this again. I'm not opposed to electoralism, but it has to happen within the context of organizing, making sure that people are aligned with what they need, and having politicians come to us to ask us, what do you want? Like, we shouldn't be begging and pleading for our politicians to do shit and voting for them and hope that they're going to do it for us. That's not how, and that's the system that we've been succumbed to for uh, definitely for our lifetimes. And that's the thing that Bowman, as a justice Democrat, was supposed to kind of break. But he ended up falling in that trap as well. So basically, the only thing I could say to him is, bye, Felicia. Like, I do not feel sorry for him being gone. And you and people in the bye, in Felicia. chat or online shouldn't feel bad for him either. Like, he will be just fine. You will not be, especially if we end up getting Trump. So, so yeah. Um, you're done. You're done. I am done. <laughs> hey, no, you love it. So, so anyway, uh, if you want me to continue ranting like this every week, uh, please feel free to scan that QR code. Or you can uh, check his, uh, check the link that you see, uh, kofi.com slash any news network. Uh, all of your funding uh, will go towards us. Uh, there won't be any cuts at all. YouTube does demonetize us, and they would have we've taken 30% of your money anyway. So uh, please feel free, if you so be so kind, 
uh, definitely donate to us with the code, or you can go to the description and see all the links of where you can donate to the network. Uh, don't forget to also like, share, and subscribe our channel because we are heavily demonetized. YouTube hates <laughs> us, and they push us way down into the bowels of the al uh, algorithm to make sure that none of our content is being presented on on the platform. Yes. So, you know, so the only way that we can even make the attempt to actually have our work being shared is by you. So please like, please share, please leave a comment. Those do count. Those do help with the algorithm. More importantly, help us get to, uh, you say 3K, we're, we're going to push it up. Let's help us get to 5K. Um, thank you guys especially within the last week, getting us to a 2K goal. Uh, but we want to see now if we can get to 5K relatively soon. And thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.